The Saturday night traditionally for the Mother Center Conference has been an opportunity to kick back um, and kind of just express in a more informal way what we've been talking about all day, why Mother Centers are special, what we get from it, what we get from our relationships with each other, um, what's motherhood really like, you know, um, warts and all, the happiness, the challenges, and try to do it in a kind of fun way instead of really being serious and you know, addressing the issues in a serious, talking way. So um, this year we have a perfect person to help us do that tonight. Um, we're going to have Beth Osnes from Mothers Acting Up. Beth is the co-founder and program coordinator for Mothers Acting Up Live, the youngest of 10 children, and now we know why she does a lot of really interesting things to get attention. <laughs> now raising three of her own, has been knee deep in kids for 42 years. She teaches theater part-time at the University of Colorado and has written books and articles on both theater and issues around mothering. She brings together her life passions with Mothers Acting Up, using theater as a tool for empowering mothers on behalf of the world's children. A lifelong activist, she is eternally grateful to have all of you as her community and to be joining her voice in a beautiful and noisy chorus. Please welcome Beth Osmond. Kids aren't cute. Kids are little, and little is cute. But it's only the little that's cute, not the kid. <laughs> Think about it, a six foot newborn would not be cute. Not only are kids not cute, but they don't like cute things. They don't even like primary colors. Given the chance, they always go for the black remote control. They don't want fuzzy stuffed animals. They want to turn the oven on. They want to drive the car. They want to work that new table saw. They're only playing with toys because it's all they can reach. In the last 14 years, I've spent quite a bit of time around kids. And I, for one, have seen their true colors. And they're not cute. Okay, this is my theory. We adults just try to make our experience of children cute to lessen the intensity of existing with them. <laughs> children are this complex labyrinth of life that's draws, this penetrating mirror into ourselves. That's why it just rubs me the wrong way to hear kids passed off as being cute. All right. I guess in my own selfish way, I want my job, I want to argue for kids to make my job title as mother appreciated as more than quaint and sweet. I want the grit and glory of motherhood revealed through the splendor of their charges. You know, just like lion tamers are revered because of the ferocity of lions. Therefore, I wish to systematically argue for adjectives other than cute when describing kids. Okay? Here we go. Kids are deep. They whack you upside the head with insight when your guard is completely down. <laughs> Accompanying Stella into a bathroom in a Mexican restaurant, she's sitting on the toilet, pushing, and she announces to me quite off the cuff, I have infinity love. Once until I give a love, another love comes back to me. <laughs> There's another point concerning the deepness of kids. Kids love infinity. Once they hear about it, that's all they talk about for the next month. One, Year, year, years! I hear them arguing. I have infinity smart. <laughs> oh no, well, I've got two infinity smart. <laughs> if you have two infinity smart, that means you don't even know what infinity is. <laughs> <laughs> and the word after infinity that they love is Googleplex. And they are very pleased with themselves. They can memorize and just casually drop in conversation the word anti disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> Also, kids are absurdists. They're always messing with your sense of reality. One time, Leo, he's barely two, I see him look out the front door of the house, run around, look out the back door, close the door, run around to the front again, open the door, look out, and then sit with a slightly panicked look on his face. We have two outside. <laughs> Like he's 
struggling and he says, I can't see my head because my face is stuck on my head. <laughs> also, kids are selfish. Driving in the car, Leo is in his car seat, i.e. Philosopher's Stone, and he says, sounding mildly worried, is Grandma going to die? I say, yeah, someday she will, but she's had a good full life. We'll be sad for ourselves when she dies, but we don't need to be sad for her. Going a little deeper and asking a little more worriedly, are you going to die, Mommy? Yeah, someday I will. But I take really good care of myself and I try to be safe, so I've probably got a lot of good life left in me. He seems mildly reassured, but is still thinking, and will Daddy die? Someday, yeah, but he's probably got a lot of good life left in him, too. And then it hits him, and he freaks. <laughs> Am I going to die? <laughs> Kids are fundamentally rooting for all number one themselves. Okay, case in point. Leo came up to me and asked if he could get a pet tarantula. I explained to him that this irrational fear of spiders he could never, really, never live in the same house with a spider. He thinks about this for a moment, and then not giving up hope of living with a spider yet, asks, do you think you'd move out if you had yet had a Also, kids are linguistic. They are daily taking our language and putting it into a salt shaker and turning it upside down. Doing to our language just what we revere Shakespeare for having done. Stella, weeping that Leo hurt her, says, he stepped on my toe. <laughs> and it was my youngest. <laughs> they're, ever, they're masters of the hyperbole. And declaring her love, she earnestly stated, I love you so much I could pull my brains out. <laughs> and they're ever surprising with the unexpected turn of phrase. When walking into the bedroom where my sister and I are sitting on the bed talking, Stella proudly announces herself, my name is Stella, and blue eyes and a teeny crotch. <laughs> and also, Kids are spiritual. <laughs> Waiting at the bank drive thru Leo at four years of age says, God is a good story. <laughs> so is Spider-Man. <laughs> are, are we just stories too? <laughs> and also, kids are savvy. One time I get a cheap flight to Wisconsin with a three-hour layover in O'Hare. After two hours of waiting, I said to Leo, we get to take two planes to grandma's, aren't we lucky? He looks up at me unimpressed and says, I don't want to be that lucky. <laughs> and also they can leave you speechless with statements and retorts to which there truly is no reply. For instance, one time Leo comes running up to me, checking over his shoulder and says, Stella's going to tell on me. <laughs> to our teenage foster daughter who lived with us for a year. I said, this is not like there's any one thing that I want you to be. You don't have to be a teacher or a doctor. I just want you to be happy. To which she replied, yeah, but what about what I want? <laughs> <laughs> and my final point of contention as to why people think kids are cute is because there is a widely spread misnomer that kids are funny. Kids aren't funny. Have you ever heard a kid try to tell a joke? <laughs> it goes on and on and on. And it's always one you've already heard. <laughs> okay, kids can be silly, but that is a very non-inclusive variety of low humor, usually based on the same fart noise made over and over again. <laughs> it's usually not funny to adults, but rather annoying. <laughs> oh, all right. Kids can be funny when they unknowingly juxtapose bizarre combinations in an earnest effort to make sense of the situation. One day Leo came up to me with a snotty nose that was suffering from some severe leakage and asked the scientific curiosity, what's inside my head besides the stuff that comes out of my nose? <laughs> and lastly, they can create the unintentional pun, made all the funnier by their complete ignorance of what they are really saying. One time my friend and her daughter were cuddling in bed and my friend said to her girl, this is what mommy and daddy do sometimes. It's called spooning. She thinks about that for a moment and then asks, do you and daddy ever fork? 